circuits are currently coursing through your body. From the light illuminating your room to the glow emanating from your computer monitor, these energy packets, carried by electromagnetic waves, power the functioning of the modern world. They enable Wi-Fi signals that connect you to the internet and Bluetooth technology that links your cell phone to your car's radio. Whether it's a satellite orbiting the Earth transmitting real-time GPS coordinates or the information transmitted by your Wi-Fi router just a room away, these electromagnetic waves facilitate communication over both long and short distances. The majority of electromagnetic waves frequency is invisible to us. Our eyes, however, are capable of perceiving a narrow range called the visible light spectrum. All the colors we see are within this range. Trying to imagine a new color right now might lead to a major existential crisis. Think of a color that already exists within the visible light spectrum. The great advantage of electromagnetic waves is that they travel through space at the speed of light in that medium, which is extremely advantageous for transmitting information quickly. An electromagnetic wave can cross the Earth in just 0.04 seconds. But since all electromagnetic waves move at the speed of light, which is a constant and doesn't change for any of them, we have another characteristic we use to categorize these waves and determine which type of electromagnetic wave we're talking about, frequency. Frequency is simply the number of times something happens within a specific time interval. For example, if I drink a glass of water every hour, then I drink water with a frequency of one glass per hour. In physics, we have a specific unit for frequency called rex. It measures the number of times something happens per second. In the case of drinking a glass of water, let's say I drink one glass per hour, and each hour has about 3,600 seconds. So, I drink water at a frequency of 0.0002 Hz in this example. This frequency is an extremely small value. However, when dealing with electromagnetic waves, these numbers are often astronomically large. For instance, red light has a frequency of around 450 terahertz, which means it oscillates nearly 450 trillion times per second. Okay, this is an extremely high frequency, but don't be alarmed. For any electromagnetic wave to have an effect on your body, it needs to interact with the tissues, molecules, or atoms that make up your body. This is precisely how we distinguish between dangerous electromagnetic waves and safe ones. The real concern lies with ionizing radiation. It possesses enough energy to strip electrons from atoms, potentially damaging your DNA. Such damage can lead to mutations and even cancer. However, specific frequencies are required for this to occur. Not all electromagnetic frequencies have the capability to remove electrons. Electrons do not absorb just any electromagnetic radiation that comes their way, thanks to the principles of quantum physics. Electrons reside within an energy barrier, a minimum threshold that must be met to dislodge them from atoms or transition them to an excited state. Only frequencies above ultraviolet in the electromagnetic spectrum possess enough energy to ionize the atoms that make up our body's cells. That's why it's crucial to apply sunscreen before heading to the beach, it protects against ultraviolet rays capable of electron displacement. DNA molecules can be damaged by ionizing radiation, potentially leading to skin cancer. However, it's important to note that ionizing radiation is not the only health risk associated with electromagnetic waves. While ionizing radiation specifically relates to cancer, there are other effects that electromagnetic waves can have on the biological tissues of the human body. A prime example of this is the use of microwaves to heat food. Microwaves generate electromagnetic waves, and their effect on biological tissues is primarily to heat the food placed inside. However, it becomes more complex when considering that different molecules or tissues respond differently to various frequencies of electromagnetic radiation. This is where we delve into the key aspect of this video. Lately, I've come across numerous articles online discussing the upcoming implementation of 5G technology in mobile devices. Interestingly, there's been a lot of concern about the frequencies used in 5G and their potential link to cancer. In this video, I aim to address the question, is 5G harmful to the human body? Before diving into 5G, let's first examine other devices that have been around for a while and operate on similar or related technologies. The first example is cell phones and smartphones. Nowadays, you likely connect to the internet on your phone using a well-known technology called 4G, which is the successor to 3G. Both 4G and 3G operate in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum at frequencies between 400 MHz and 3.5 GHz. For comparison, the ultraviolet waves I mentioned inside the sun have at least a million times higher frequency. The higher the frequency of electromagnetic waves, the greater the energy they carry. This energy has the power to dislodge electrons from atoms and molecules. 
Speaking strictly in terms of energy, visible light is at least a thousand times more energetic than the waves used by cell phones. Furthermore, most homes have devices that emit even more energetic waves, cell phones and Wi-Fi routers. Nowadays, routers typically operate on two frequencies simultaneously, 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. The network using 2.4 GHz usually functions over long distances because, with its lower frequency, it has a longer wavelength and can better penetrate obstacles such as rooms, walls, and corners in a house. On the other hand, the 5 GHz network carries more energy with each wave, allowing for faster and more efficient data transfer. That's why connecting to the 5 GHz network enables much faster download speeds compared to the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network. However, there is a catch. The higher frequency of the 5 GHz network means its wavelength is shorter. That's why the 5 GHz network struggles to penetrate walls and requires significant power to overcome obstacles. Even though the 5 GHz router in your home is emitting electromagnetic waves, they are at least a thousand times less energetic than the light bulb illuminating you or the monitor of your computer or mobile device as you watch this video. So, where does 5G fit into this story? 5G is likely the next evolution, building upon our current 4G technology. It's already being used in some countries like the United States and South Korea. One of its significant advantages is the ability to transmit even more data with minimal packet loss. While 5G envisions the use of a broad range of frequencies, the current commonly used frequency is 3.5 GHz, placing it between the two frequencies used by your home router. This means that the frequency used by countries operating with 5G is at least a thousand times lower than the light illuminating you right now. So, why is there so much discussion surrounding 5G? This concern is not new, it has been around since the early days of cell phones. The main concern is that the electromagnetic radiation used by cell phones could be associated with an increase in cancer cases. The response to this concern is quite convincing. To date, there is not enough strong evidence to support the claim that the electromagnetic radiation emitted by our cell phones, computers, Wi-Fi, or electronic devices in general is linked to an increase in cancer cases. The reason is simple. The frequencies used by these devices are not energetic enough to disrupt the atoms, molecules, or DNA in our tissues, which is what causes cancer. So, if you were worried about the new 5G technology, don't feel bad about it. Fear is a natural reaction when exposed to new things, and as with any new technology introduced into society, we need to study the effects of 5G on the human body. However, cancer won't be one of them. The same applies to your Wi-Fi router or the cell phone in your pocket right now, they simply don't emit electromagnetic waves with a frequency high enough to cause cancer. Thank you very much, and see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe in the channel for more videos.